Most of you watching this video must be 21st century born, either millennials or Gen Z, and every viewer must be a 20th or 21st century born with a mobile handset and an internet connection, as our generation is often curious about what actual Bharat looked like. What were the dresses that our ancestors wore? What was the cuisine like? How did people converse among themselves? And what did the lifestyle used to be? Well, fortunately, our history has been documented in the forms of epics that dictate not only our civilizational values, but also other things about the traditional culture of Bharat. However, the landmass has been the victim of numerous foreign invasions, be it Mongols, Turks, Mughals, Irani, Afghani, Portuguese, Dutch or British. Hi and welcome to TFI Post. I am your host Manu. If you are watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and press the bell icon to get all the latest updates. If you are watching us on Facebook, do like, share and subscribe to the page. Let's begin with the video report. What did every invasion do? Each and every foreign invasion drifted us away from our roots and then happened the evolution of a composite culture that must not be celebrated. How you may ask? Look around. From cuisine to furniture to dressing style, none has remained original and every aspect of our lives reflects our culture, subjugation by foreign powers. Let me put forward some examples. How do we speak Hindi now? As a mishmash of words from different languages and dialects like Urdu, Dakhani and even Pashto. We cannot even ask for water without using a Portuguese word which is gilas. Look at our clothing and see how we have progressed from dhoti and sari to salwar kameez and sherwani. The culture mismatch did bring other cultures to mainland India but simultaneously it also eroded our culture. Who should be held responsible for the same? Only the foreign invaders or are we also equally to blame? Well, to speak the truth, we are equally responsible for the erosion of our culture and for mocking them. The most famous suite of India, Son Papri, may meet the same fate in the coming months. We Indians love sweets and this is a fact no one can deny. We love sweets so much that we convert every celebration or festival to Mithai Ka Tuhar. Thanks to our diverse culture from north to south and from east to west, we have a whole lot of options when it comes to choosing sweets. It can be Sondesh, Roshugula or maybe Ghevar, maybe Gulab Jamun or Kaju Katli or the most loved and with something I associate with my childhood memories with Son Papadi. As Indians, no one can claim that they never had Son Papri. Son Papri is one of the most famous Indian deserts that gain special attention around festivities. Son Papri is called by many names like Patisa, Sun Papri, Sohan Papri or Sean Papri. It has a flaky texture and comes mostly in a square shape. Hence, it is often called Indian candy floss. The dessert, which is sold everywhere in India, has a very contentious origin. The dessert is said to have originated in the western states of Maharashtra and later spread across Gujarat, Punjab and Rajasthan. Some reports credit the Bijnor district of Uttar Pradesh for the origin of the dessert. Tell me, how will today's children remember their childhood? Somewhat like getting dressed up after pre nursery classes and playing in the play zone of malls or binge watching cartoons the whole day. Well, I find myself lucky that my childhood has not been like this. I recall having bruises on my knees after playing for three long hours. And then with some of my favorite and most frequently bought sweets, Son Papri. Every time I travelled or should I say most of us travelled, we must have encountered Son Papri Wala selling Son Papri in Dabbas or on our commutes. Another memory that has been passed on to me from my parents is that Son Papri unlike any other sweet was brought in exchange for many domestic things like wheat or old clothes. None can compare with the cultural threads that Son Papri owns. Unfortunately, the sweet that was such an important part of our childhood while we were growing up has now become main material. 
As soon as the festive season approaches, Son Papri is shamelessly converted into a butt of jokes. People generally tend to exchange gifts during this festive season, especially around Diwali. The gifts include sweets and dry fruits other than Sobhi Papri. In the recent past, with the advent of social media platforms, we have had the facility or a privilege, I say, to speak or write anything and everything we feel, obviously with some reasonable restrictions. Some users might have written about the use of Son Papri some years back. Since then, it has become a tradition to joke about Son Papri when Diwali is around the corner. Whatever may be happening around the world, there is always one of many who benefit from it. With all the flag that was aimed at Son Papri, there were many who benefited from the market of Son Papri going down. Don't be surprised, in current times, social media not only drives but forms popular opinion. The flag against Son Papri affected its market share, especially in Tier 2 and Metro Cities. The MNCs who were into the sweet business benefited from the same. As people ditched Son Papri, these MNCs served as viable options and their products became the go-to gift. If you have to gift someone on Diwali and you are not buying a packet of Son Papri, what would you prefer? Going to a halwai and asking for Bhai, a kilo kaju katli pack kar do? Or would you just buy any packed item of dry foods or maybe chocolates? Majority of us are designed to pick the latter route. This is how companies' products like Dairy Milk became the Facebook of gifting industry. And this is how we ditched our very own Desi Healthy Son Papri for chocolates. So what do you think? Are we making a heap out of nothing? What is the problem if one chooses chocolates or packed dry fruits over Desi Indian Mithai? There is a problem, a serious one. We are doing to Son Papri what we did to our Sanatan Dharma a traditional Bharatiya cuisine or a language. We are once again ditching something unique and original for the sake of what looks modern. A packet of chocolate may look modern to you, but remember that coat tie looked modern to many Indians who sold India at the hands of British East India Company. You can eat anything you want like, but for Hindu festivals, reserve your meals for desi cuisine. Today it's a mithai, tomorrow it can be tradition or custom, and next, it could be our dharma. We need to protect what's our own. No one else would do it for us. What is the popular opinion that you need to hit the gym to shed off all the calories that you gathered along with the Diwali sweets? However, contrary to what the influencers tell you, Son Papri can actually be good to your health. Son Papri helps in weight loss and management. Yes, don't be shocked. Rather, recall the ingredients of Son Papri. Son papri is made up of ground flour, which is rich in protein as well as fiber, an ideal ingredient for weight management. It makes you feel fuller for a longer duration, thus saving you from the menace of snacking and brunching. Son papri, despite being a mithai, helps in diabetes management as the ground flour present in it consists of a huge amount of magnesium that helps in the better secretion of insulin. Ground floor also maintains optimum blood pressure and is loaded with antioxidants, which means that it prevents cardiovascular diseases. Dry fruits present in Son Papri also help maintain digestion as they are rich in fiber protein and healthy fat. I am sure that no one would have ever told you about the health benefits of Son Papri. All you might have seen till now would have been jokes on Son Papri. Well, now that you know the health benefits, you can now eat Son Papri in a limited amount and teach a lesson to all those trollers and MNCs who made you feel bad about your very own Desi Mithai.